DKR's plane is, simply put, the Chad of the three vehicle options. Its gameplay style is sheer, brute force speed and reckless gameplay that stands out as some of the flashiest and most visually entertaining content in the whole game. Sadly, the plane goes somewhat underappreciated, boasting only a measly 11 tracks that can be played in it. Newer players may find themselves discouraged or frustrated with the plane early on because of its extremely high difficulty and its brutal punishments for even the smallest of mistakes. Plane is hard. Plane is punishing. Plane is very difficult to master. No! But plane is very fast. Before we get into the speed tech used by the plane, let's take a moment to review how to actually drive the plane, as it's actually quite different from car and hover. When grounded, the plane actually has real landing gear deployed. This landing gear helps the plane stick to the ground. Before being able to fly, the plane has to reach a certain minimum top speed by holding down the A button. Once this speed has been reached, you can start to pull down on the joystick to lift up into the air. And yes, you heard that right. The joystick controls for the plane are inverted. Pulling down on the stick will pull the plane up into the air, while pushing up on the stick will push the plane down into the ground. This can take some getting used to, since players often have stark preference on joystick inputs like this. Once the plane is in the air, the landing gear will retract, and you will be free to steer the plane in any direction you wish. Up, down, left, right, you can fly anywhere. There are limits to this, however. Every track in DKR has a ceiling. Attempting to fly into it can actually lose you quite a bit of speed and this will be important to keep in mind going forwards. There are certain cases where getting too close to the ground can cause problems. Your landing gear and wings can oftentimes get caught on the floor and walls of the track. This can be quite unexpected, especially when flying at extremely high speeds. To break out of this state, you need to pull all the way down on the joystick, which will feel almost like you're unsticking yourself from the ground. One thing you might notice is a speed boost when flying near the ground. This is actually an oversight on the programming of the plane. While the speedometer shows you gaining what appears to be a huge boost of speed, the velocity of the vehicle is the same whether you are high up in the air or low down in the dirt. The code that contains this oversight, however, is the same code that allows the plane to follow inclines as it flies. As you traverse the world of DKR, the game helps pilots out a little bit by pulling the plane down towards the ground. Sometimes this can be helpful, other times it can get in the way of your preferred movement. But it's a good thing to understand, especially for players that might find themselves having a hard time with pitch control. Now that we've got the basics of driving the vehicle down, let's get into the real speed tech we exploit to hit Mach 5 in the plane. Let's start slow, though. First, we'll discuss the R button. Like the hovercraft, plane uses the R button to give advanced steering control. While holding R, you can turn and adjust pitch much more sharply. It's recommended overall that pretty much any time you're playing in plane that you hold down the R button. Normal steering by comparison is extremely limiting. 
The R button also has an additional function when the plane is going fast enough. By double tapping it, you can perform aerial tricks. Which trick you perform is based on your joystick position. If your joystick is neutral or in the down position, double tapping R will cause you to do a backflip. Alternatively, pushing up on the joystick will make you do a front flip. Left and right joystick position will cause you to do barrel rolls to the left or to the right. There are very few uses for the backflip and front flip aerial tricks overall, though they can be a very fun thing to play around with. When you perform your double R tap, the second button press can be held down. For both of these flip tricks respectively, holding R like this will force the plane to stay inverted in the air for longer than normal. This extends the length of the trick a bit, and if you're going fast enough, you can actually fly inverted and backwards quite far. Once the flip is ended, you will be given a small boost. While helpful, this boost is usually pretty small, and overall you'll have lost speed for performing the flip. Again, there aren't really that many uses for these tricks, but they are functions of the plane that should be known. The other trick available to us, however, is the plane's most important bit of speed tech by far. If you have watched any amount of DKR plane gameplay, you have probably seen players spinning out of control at quite literally any chance they get. What they're doing here is consecutively barrel rolling over and over again. This is because every barrel roll you perform actually stacks up to a very high flying speed. We can abuse this boost by performing the trick as often as we can, using left and right barrel rolls to control our trajectory. Using barrel rolls to go fast might sound simple at first, but the amount of technique needed to truly take advantage of this trick is pretty astounding. First off, barrel rolls are not simple straight flying maneuvers. The joystick inputs needed to do these tricks are very flexible, so much as to allow you to barrel roll downwards or upwards depending on your need. For example, pushing the joystick down and left will not only tilt the plane to face the sky, but will be pushed left far enough to trigger the barrel roll. Barrel rolling downwards is slightly more difficult. Go too high on the stick here, and you will front flip instead. You can do a slight downwards adjustment by going only halfway up to the top corner notch, or an easier alternative, push up on the joystick first, and then quickly execute a normal barrel roll. This will point the nose of the plane downwards first, and then the barrel roll will execute in that direction. So now, not only can we barrel roll in a straight line to fly faster, we can barrel roll up and down steep surfaces. We can barrel roll up into a balloon, down onto a ground zipper, over into an air zipper. There are tons of options available to us with this realization, but it goes even deeper. In between barrel rolls, it's actually possible to apply slight adjustments to the plane's pitch as you fly. While holding left or right and spamming the R button over and over again is easier and will result in the fastest straight line movement, it can be better in certain situations to meter out your R taps. This will allow you to time out joystick inputs to gently adjust your pitch in between each barrel roll. This is actually a buffered action so there can be quite a bit of leeway in making sure your pitch changes to the trajectory you need it to. These pitch adjustments are absolutely vital to having full control over the plane. Barrel rolls are by far the fastest way to travel, and having the ability to fly up or down in between rolling can help the plane keep the chain of rolls going, which will always result in faster times. It's important to note here as well that aerial tricks in general can be buffered. Double tapping the R button in the middle of a barrel roll or flip will queue up an additional trick after the current one is finished. So spamming the R button can often result in an extra roll when you didn't want it to. 
This is very common, and everyone does it on accident at some point. You just need to make sure your joystick is set to full left or full right before you double tap R. Something you definitely don't want to do in barrel rolling is hold the A button. The A button here acts as a throttle and will eat up a lot of the speed you should be gaining from consecutive barrel rolls. However, this does not mean that the A button is entirely useless to us during barrel rolls. One of the most important things to get a feel for in plane is the concept of spacing. Is there enough space between the vehicle and the obstacle I need to get past to fit in another barrel roll? This is the question every plane player is constantly trying to answer as they fly about a track. It's what determines the exact line you take on every lap of a race. It's here we can find a great emergency use for the A button. During a barrel roll, you can shorten the distance you travel by holding A. So if perhaps you want to try to fit in one more roll, you might perform that last roll while holding A. This could be a very helpful back pocket trick to save yourself from bonking and preserve a more comfortable speed over an awkward distance. But I'm Stomstack! This is a good time to mention the uh, rooster in the room. Many of the clips shown so far are shown played not as TT the clock, but as Drumstick the rooster. This is actually the only time in DKR where another character can be as fast or faster than TT the clock. Drumstick has worse handling in plane, much worse in fact, but his barrel rolls are actually faster than TT's. We really only ever see Drumstick being played in time trials and on tracks with long, straight segments where his faster barrel rolls can be utilized constantly. TT is much stronger on tracks with very tight turns by comparison. Although barrel rolls are great, there will always be parts of the game that you simply cannot find a line to barrel roll through. It's these moments that require us to talk about A-tapping. A-tapping does work in the plane, and its rules are nearly identical to that of the hovercraft. Before you can begin A-tapping, you need to be flying at top speed, so holding down the A button for an appropriate amount of time is necessary. A-tapping in the plane is at its best when only releasing the A button for one frame per tap. This makes A-tapping in plane feel stiff and controlled. You don't want to bounce your thumb up and down on the button. You want to release and re-grab the button quickly. For the most part, you will enter back into an A-tapping phase of a track after you have just finished a barrel roll or a boost. Once the roll has finished, plane requires a full re-grab of the A button to begin A-tapping again, much like the hovercraft's A button re-grab. After holding A for a time, top speed should once again be stabilized, and you can begin A-tapping normally. Right up until the next chance, you get to begin a long chain of barrel rolls. This is really the only time the A button should be used in plane. To try to put this in perspective, almost all of Everfrost Peak can be done without touching the A button at all. If all goes well, an experienced player only needs to hold A for the first few seconds until they hit the first ground zipper. After that, it's roll after roll, boost after boost, until the race is over. The B button in DKR is a brake in all three of its vehicles, and it's almost exclusively used to make extremely sharp turns. In plane, this remains true. While holding R down at almost all times in the plane, tapping the B button will help you turn very sharply, and is often done to help make drastic adjustments to angles and trajectories more quickly. Plane Challenge is a perfect example of the B button at work. There are no boosts in this overworld track, just lots of sharp turns and long straightaways with which to practice your barrel rolls. 
The B button can cause problems, however. Brake too much, and you will eventually lose a lot of speed. This is especially bad when needing to start a barrel roll chain, as barrel rolls require a minimum speed to perform. This is seen most often when flying out of bounds, where players will turn very sharply, sometimes even needing to perform a full U-turn, and the B button will slow them down too much. This renders them unable to roll, and therefore causes a massive time loss. Instead, you can just hold A and B down at the same time to help accelerate through the sharp turn, and retain the speed needed to perform the barrel roll. It's faster, but much riskier to trust the full B turn. Boosting is, of course, extremely important for the plane, and is one place in particular where the B button is used a lot, both for making the micro-adjustments needed to hit zippers accurately, and for turning very sharply while still getting the most out of the speed. First off, hover and plane zippers work differently than ground zippers. On a ground zipper, simply touching it will give you the boost. For both hover and plane zippers, however, you need to be facing the same direction as the zipper is pointing. If you are misaligned in any way, the game will take a moment to redirect you. This loses time, and can often give lower quality boosts. Driving straight on through the zipper is more difficult, but by mastering the micro-adjustments needed to do so will improve the quality of your boosts dramatically. What makes these adjustments even more difficult is that it is usually faster to try and barrel roll into these zippers. The speed boost from the roll will stack with the speed gained from the zipper, resulting in a huge burst of speed. Barrel roll incorrectly, however, and you will get caught up in the zipper, losing time. Additionally, plane and hover zippers tend to eat barrel roll inputs. If you try to barrel roll the moment you hit the zipper, the roll will oftentimes get cancelled in a way, and the game will force the zipper to take priority. If you wait just a moment after the boost, however, the barrel roll will come out normally, again compounding the speed gained from the zipper. Boosting is also one of the main mechanisms that allows the plane to clip out of the track, and fly around out of bounds. This video is long enough as it is, so we'll be covering out of bounds gameplay in a future video. More video tutorials will come out soon regarding specific out-of-bounds clips and how to perform them, but for now, playing is hard enough as it is. There are so many different ways to play this vehicle. The skill ceiling is truly almost limitless. A few times a year, we see world record improvements in the span of multiple seconds, despite the fact that this game has been out since 1997. There is always some harder strat, some better line, some faster and more difficult strategy that can result in enormous time saves, which makes playing an extremely exciting vehicle to play, watch, and comment on. So much of this vehicle is on-the-fly adjustments, too. The moment your wing bumps the wall even just a little bit, your trajectory is completely thrown off, and it's up to the pilot to pretend they have any idea what they're doing, and either get back on the line, or make something up as they go. It can be really flustering and frustrating when things like this start to go wrong, but that's what makes it such a tricky vehicle to play. And the best plane players in the world know what to do when things start to go awry. If you're feeling brave enough to tackle mastering this vehicle, don't get discouraged by those huge bonks. Everybody has had them, Come on. and they are very common to see. It's simply a part of the game and a part of the vehicle. Hit start, tab down to restart race, and try again. Try not to play it safe either. This vehicle is about going all out. Full YOLO. Yahoo! Before this video ends, we have to review the most infamous plane track. Yep, Space Dust Alley. This track has it all. Huge sections of boosting, tight barrel roll lines with pitch adjustment, sharp turns, and even an A-tapping section. On screen, you'll see each piece of tech talked about in this video. 
each tech will flash on and off, based on which of them is being performed in the gameplay. If you'd like, you can use YouTube's playback settings to watch this portion back at a slower speed. Check the description below for updates on this tutorial. You can also find more reference materials for this video, as well as links to DKR64.com and the Discord. Thanks for watching.